Slaughter's my name, Luke Slaughter. Cattle's my business. It's a tough business. It's big business. I've got a big stake in it. And there's no man west of the Rio Grande big enough to take it from me. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Luke Slaughter of Tombstone, Civil War cavalryman turned Arizona cattleman. Across the territory from Yuma to Fort Defiance, from Flagstaff to the Huachucas, and below the border through Chihuahua and Sonora, his name was respected or feared, depending on which side of the law you were on. Man of vision, man of legend, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. Carl Justice was dead. Bushwhacked in the Chiricahuas for the $10,000 he was carrying. But Justice wasn't dead. The posse from the Cattlemen's Association would see to that if we had to cover every half section between the petrified forest and the Mexican border. And it looked like we might. At least the first day in the saddle, we didn't find a trace of Justice's killer or the gold. A tired bunch of Ranahans when we came back to town that afternoon. All right, boys, get yourselves a good night's rest. Be ready to ride again at sunup. Come on. Well, howdy, Luke. Hello, Wichita. You look like you've been eating a lot of dust. I have. You turn up anything? Nothing. Not a single sign. Well, a killer's got to leave a sign. This one didn't. Sure is a shame. Carl ought to know better than to try carrying all that money over to Bisbee by himself. But he didn't. Oh, man, I'm tired. You going to go out to the ranch tonight? No, I'll grab some shut-eye over at the office. Let's go. Well, hold up a minute. You can't get by this outfit. Well, wagons. It's a pretty small train to be traveling alone. Keep it moving. <laughs> Real driving boss, ain't he? Bet he wasn't raised on prunes and proverbs. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a, it's a funny thing about that outfit. What's that? No kids. Not a single one. Yeah, that is peculiar. Usually they got young'uns festooned all over, from the driver's box to the tailgate. <laughs> well, I'm going to spread out on the cot back there. Yeah, yeah, you do that, Luke. And you better under unlimber your guns. You ain't had them off since you rode out of here before dawn. Yeah. I'll drop them here on the desk. Yeah. yeah and p- pull your hat down over your eyes, Luke. Anybody come around asking fool questions, I'll take care of them. Thanks, Wichita. I sure wish I could find some trace of that killer. Oh, forget it now, Luke. I want to hear you snoring inside of two minutes. Carl Justice can't get no deader than he is right now. Eh, evening, stranger. What can I do for you? You can reach, mister. This is the office of the Cattlemen's Association, stranger. Why the six-gun? I'm asking the questions. Who's the hombre on the bed? Why, well, uh... Answer me. Oh, him. Uh, drunk, uh, sleeping it off. <laughs> So you're the famous Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. What do you want, stranger? That's what I wanted, Slaughter. Put you to sleep for a while. Wichita. Wichita. I shouldn't have taken my guns off. You get your wits back. I'll take over now. Hey, hey, Slaughter. Slaughter, they, they broke a window and I was fixing to rob a bank. Who was? Well, there, there was two of them, and they, now they're riding east out of town. Oh. Well, ain't you going to follow them? Why should I? Well, you, well, you're head of the posse for the cattlemen. You're supposed to What about your... that other rider headed west? Well, he weren't nowhere near the bank. He come out of your office. That's right. Well, Slaughter, now look, we're we standing here yammering. Them thieves is getting that much farther. Did they get anything? 
No, but I told you they broke a window. I've got bigger problems than a broken window. Go chase them yourself. You... Well, hold a high-handed cloud in the trailways to wink at a plain case of law. What's... What's going on, anyway, Luke? I don't know, Wichita. I wish I did. That hombre had no call to pistol whip me. He wouldn't have gotten away with it if I'd had my guns. But remember, he thought he was pistol whipping me, Wichita. See, that's right. Well, ain't you gonna try to chase him down? No, it's almost dark. Besides, who would you chase? The two riding east who broke the window in the bank... Or the one riding west who dented your skull. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Clean getaway on all counts, huh? No, Wichita, I don't think so. I've got an idea. But right now, let's get over to the old docks and get a plaster for your scalp. You might need your head before the night's out. <laughs> told me one blame thing about where we're going or what you're up to. <laughs> I'm not sure myself. Well, just riding in the moonlight won't get us nowhere. Besides, I'd think you'd, you'd... You'd had yourself enough riding for one day. I have. I don't cotton to a stranger cracking you over the side of the head with a pistol. Yeah, I appreciate that, Luke, but... And there are some other things that just don't fit. Such as... Now, why did those bank robbers break a window? That's noise. The last thing a thief wants. Why, doggies, that's right. But that still don't explain why we're night riding out here a mile west of town, headed for California. <laughs> we're not going that far, Wichita. Rain up. Oh, Barry. Oh. Oh, oh. stand still. Yeah. Now what? Well, I figure the wagon train that came through town just before sundown could have gotten any further than Mule Crossing before it bedded down. What of it? I'm going to pay him a visit. Luke, this ain't no time for being social. This isn't social, Wichita. This is business. You think that wagon train had something to do with all these things been going on? Maybe. You wait here behind these rocks and don't move out for anybody. I'll whistle when I come back. Why you want me to stay here? Because I think I'm going to need you later. Yeah. Hope you know what you're doing. I'll know better in a half hour. So long. Uh, so long, you dead blame tight mouth. <laughs> Hold up. And don't you turn around. Evening. What's your business, stranger? I want to talk to the boss of this wagon train. Why? Are you the boss? No. Then I'm talking to the wrong man. Where's your boss? Put up your hands and move on. Slow. Hey, Burwell. Yeah? This is Lanigan. I'm coming in. Come on in. Don't sit out there and yell about it. I got me a snooper. Here he is, Burwell, riding in like he owned the camp. Yeah. And we ain't much for visitors when they come at us in the dark, mister. What you want? Some information. What kind? How many people in your train, where you're headed, where you camped last night, and where you were on the trail the day before that? Nosy, ain't he? Maybe you gents ought to know my name. Well, what is it? Slaughter. Luke Slaughter. He ain't Luke Slaughter, Shut Burwell. up, Lanigan. I'll handle this. <laughs> Just who did you think I was, Lanigan? Why, I... I We're pleased I don't... to make your acquaintance, Slaughter. My name is Burwell. Why don't you uh, light and enjoy the fire? Thanks, Burwell. How about those questions of yours? Why do you want to know about us? For your own protection. There was a murder ten miles east of Tombstone early last night. We haven't found the killer yet. A bushwhacking, huh? Yeah. And whoever did it got away with several thousand dollars in gold. Oh, say, that's too bad. There's a couple of other things, too. Just after you passed through town before sunset, there was an attempt to rob the bank. You don't say. And a good friend of mine named Wichita got pistol-whipped while that was happening. What the hell? <laughs> 
Things are kind of active in Tombstone, ain't they? Well, now, you don't think that my little outfit... I think that your outfit might be in for trouble if it met up with any of these lawbreakers. Oh, I see. Those questions, Burwell. Oh, sure, sure, Slaughter. Well, there's 11 of us. There's eight men, three women. We left Dodge City several weeks ago, headed for the ocean. Camped on the trail last night, no special place. Have you seen anything or anybody unusual? No, no, can't say I have. Well, keep your eyes open, Burwell. I wouldn't want to see an innocent wagon train get dry gulched. Oh, we'll do that, Slaughter. Mighty nice of you to ride out to tell us. Friendly thing to do, I figure. <laughs> now, we, we ain't got much by way of hospitality, but uh, I could lay the dust a little for you. Well, now, that'd go down real good on a night like this. <laughs> Molly! Yeah, Hank? Bring the whiskey. A man's going to have to forget his manners out in the trail, Slaughter. Here's the jug, Hank. Yeah. Well, this here is Luke Slaughter, Molly. She's my wife. Howdy, ma'am. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Slaughter. Why don't you try this for size? Thanks. Just right. <laughs> Well, it's turning into a cold night. Have another. No, thanks. That does it. It's time I got back to town. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Burwell, one thing has me curious. What's that, Mr. Slaughter? Every wagon train I've ever seen carried at least half a dozen kids. You don't seem to have any. Uh, some people don't have children. I guess that's right. It was just a thought. Are you being pretty personal, ain't you, Slaughter? I didn't mean to be. So long, Lanigan. Maybe we'll meet up again sometime. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Like I said, Burwell, be careful. Adios. In a moment, Luke Slaughter of Tombstone returns. On CBS Radio's Gunsmoke today, a colorful character named Livy learns that arson is a crime, no matter what the motive. Livy doesn't want her son to grow up like his alcoholic father. Her notion of how to keep the boy from drinking is set afire to every saloon in Dodge City. When she threatens to act on her idea, however, she lights the fuse on an explosive situation for Marshal Matt Dillon, as well as for herself. For adventure in the West as our pioneers knew it, hear this thrilling episode of Gunsmoke later today on CBS Radio. And now, Act Two of William N. Robeson's production of Luke Slaughter of Tombstone. beginning to know all the coyotes by name. It was worth it, Wichita. I've been talking to the man that pistol whipped you a few hours ago. You was? And after that, Bunch has had a chance to think it over. I think we'll both be talking to him. It, 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 it makes sense, will you, Luke? That wagon train, Wichita. It's the headquarters for everything that's been happening around here lately. It is? Well, you, you just ain't gonna leave them out there and, 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 and let them go on. No. Unless I'm dead wrong... They're going to send a man gunning for me. And I think I know who it'll be. That pistol whipper? Yeah. Listen. That's one horse, Luke. And one rider. He's got to slow down to get through these rocks. And when he does, jump him. That will be a pleasure. Hey! hey Don't reach or I'll drop you. <sighs> what is this? Get his guns, Wichita. Already got him, Luke. Slaughter. Yeah, Lanigan. Slaughter. Can't a man ride into town for a peaceful drink without being ambushed? Light. But I, I don't see why... Get out that horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. Lanigan, 
I want you to meet a friend of mine. Wichita, this is the man who laid that gun barrel alongside your ear this evening. I ought to kill you, same as I would a skunk. Ah, oh, wait a minute, boys. I... It's against my nature to fight an unarmed man, Lanigan. Any one of his guns, Wichita. Barrel first. Luke. Now put it in your holster, Lanigan. And you're welcome to use it anytime you want to. Slaughter, I... I... Tell me the real story about that wagon train, Lanigan. Why, well, I... I don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever been pistol whipped? No, no. You're about to learn what it feels like unless you care to draw. Oh, Slaughter, for the love of heaven, you don't you... killed Carl Justice. But I never heard of no Carl Justice. He had $10,000 in gold yesterday. What's that now got he's to do dead. with me? Who killed him? You tell me or I'm going to rake a gun sight through your left ear. Talk or draw, Lanigan. <laughs> Who killed him? You want another one? No, no. It was Burwell. He told me not to, but he he, he put up a fight and, and, and Burwell... A man doesn't fight with his back. Why did you pistol whip Wichita? Well, it was Burwell's idea. He heard about you and he thought that if you was laid low for a while, people would want to go after whoever That's what did I figured. It. Yeah. And, and then a couple of the boys broke that window in the bank to make it look like... Burwell's a pretty smart man, isn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah he sure is. But he made the mistake of getting feather-headed yellow gunslingers like you to work for him. Look, you can't call me... I no... am calling you. If it isn't true, draw. <laughs> Take his gun, Wichita. He won't use it. Oh, Slaughter. <laughs> Please give me a chance. Just let me go, and I'll go back to Dodge, and I'll, I'll never come out this way again. Wichita, head his horse back toward camp and give it a slap. Sure, Luke. Oh, what you gonna do, Slaughter? I'm gonna use you for bait. Wichita, you walk him back into town. Well, where are you going? I'm not through here yet. Oh, and get a message to Sutton. Tell him to wake up the posse and spread him around the cattleman's office, ready to shoot. Well, you can't face that whole wagon train by yourself. I won't have to, Wichita. When Lanigan's horse gets back to camp, they'll know something went wrong, and most of them will go to town looking for me. That's why I want that posse standing by. Uh, well, what do you want me to do with this here tail-dragging specimen when I get him back to town? Tie him up in the back room of the cattleman's office and wait for me. Oh, and uh, don't light any lanterns. You don't have no objections if I have to ruffle this waddy up some, do you? <laughs> None at all. Well, come on, you... Walk! Get your hands up. All of you. Who's out there? Luke Slaughter, ma'am. Now do as I tell you. What you holding a gun for, Slaughter? Are there any guards out? No. All the men folk rode into town a while back. <laughs> I liked your hospitality so well, Mrs. Burwell. I came back for some more of it. Then put that gun away. You don't need that. I think I might. You see, Mrs. Burwell, I know the whole story. What do you mean? Lanigan talked. That's what I mean. Well, now, that puts a different light on things. How so? Burwell lied to you about me. He lied about everything. But this is important. I'm not his wife. What of it? You're a good-looking man, Mr. Slaughter. Make some woman a fine husband. A rich woman, Luke. Meaning? I know where there's a sack of gold big enough to last a man and a woman like you and me for the rest of our lives. I'll bet you do. Why don't you call me Molly? All right, Molly. Have you ever kissed a high-spirited woman, Luke? Why don't we get rid of the company first? <laughs> What do you want to do with them? Tie them up. 
spread eagle on a wagon wheel. Oh, you sure are smart. We're gonna get along fine. Now, about that gold, Molly. Ah, oh, no hurry, is there? You might as well tell me no. I don't know as I can trust you yet. No. No, you don't. But I want to. It's in a chest in the lead wagon. Thanks. Now stand over there with the rest of them. What? I want to tie you up too, Molly. Slaughter, if I had a gun... I know. I'd be dead, just like Carl Justice. Yeah. Well, what's that sack you're carrying? The gold that belonged to Carl Justice. Burwell show up? Yeah, with six of his partners. Come up on the boardwalk out front. Thought they was going to break in for a minute, but they decided against it. Heard one of them say it'd make too much commotion. Where'd they go? Right across the street there to the Oriental. That means when we fire up some lanterns, we'll have visitors. Is the posse spread out? Just like you said... On the roof of the Oriental, on top of the bank, the dry goods store and express company. Good. How's Lanigan? Well, he's going to have a sore head before he hangs. I had to persuade him just a little before he'd go to sleep. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. Well, let's get this over with. I'm going out the front door. You light the lamps in the office. <laughs> By jokies, this does my old heart good. There he is now, boy. Come on. Stay where you are, Burwell. Well, now, Slaughter, boys and me just want to talk to you. Do you talking from right there? I don't like to shout up and down the street. I do. Before you say anything else, I think you ought to know that you're covered by 18 guns, 20 including mine. And in case you think I'm not telling the truth... I'll ask the men on the top of the bank to speak up. Now, just what did you want to talk about, Burwell? Let's forget it, Slaughter. Me and the boys will be moseying along now. No, you won't. I've got some talking to do. Your women folk are tied up to the wagons out at your camp. One of your gunslingers is tied up in the office behind me. And he talked... And this, Burwell, this is $10,000 in gold that I got out of your lead wagon. It belonged to Carl Justice before you killed him. You got anything to say now, Burwell? I reckon you said it all. Then drop your guns and step forward. All of you. All right, men, close in and take them. Luke? That is the dingest thing I ever seen. Got every single one of them and didn't smoke up the town a bit. Sometimes you're lucky, Wichita. But don't fool around with a red hot branding iron until you're ready for the roundup. Slaughter of Tombstone, starring Sam Buffington, was written by Alan Botzer and directed by William N. Robeson. Editorial supervision by Tom Hanley. Supporting Mr. Buffington were Gene Carson, Junius Matthews, Lawrence Dobkin, and Chet Stratton, with music composed and conducted by Amerigo Marino. <laughs> Next week at this time, we return with... Slaughter's the name. Luke Slaughter. When we meet up again, you can call me that. Luke Slaughter. This is the CBS Radio Network.